Is that Gordon? I don't know. Let's you pump check him up. It? We do have, uh, yeah, let's, let's find out. Hi, you're live on the air with CTG. Is this Gordon? Yes, this is. Awesome, man. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> we were uh, we were just talking about uh, Christy Wrinkley there in, uh, in Long Island being, <laughs> being married to Billy Joel. So just to introduce Gordon to our kids at home, Gordon Gebbard, am I saying that right? Oh, yeah. Sweet. You got he it. is the author of not only uh, at least three books, Kiss and Tell, Kiss and Tell More, and Rock and Roll War Stories. Yeah. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Nah, you got them. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sue, just point out. Let me let me uh, do the legal ID here before the FCC like kills us. We're gonna just rock this out. Hold on a sec. Cool. WCTG, Shinkatig, Akamak, Onamcock, ninety six five WCTG, Sue. home to Doc and Dean in the morning. Ooh. Sue just it saved my radio man. career there. How you doing tonight, Gordon? Good. How you doing, Al? Awesome, man. So, for like, say, kids that don't know, Gordon. Um, well, well, go ahead and tell us. You were friends with Ace Fraley in the uh, in the eighties. So, go ahead and set us up on how you met the Ace. I'm wearing an Ace shirt tonight, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, I, I grew up in Yonkers, and uh, you guys are going to make fun of my New York accent there. No, so. we won't. Oh, you can. You're Sue's, right. <laughs> Sue's from Philly. I'm from the Philly area. Uh, oh, I got a bad New York accent. So, um, I, I used to. Um, uh, work in the studio in the Bronx, and Ace, Ace used to come, uh, Bob McAdams owned the studio, and he was like best friends with Ace. So I used to work, I used to do all the, the local bands there, you know, trying to record, make it, and things like that, and I I play keyboards. So nice. uh, I'd see Ace walk in and out, and in, in and out the studio all the time. And every, all my friends were all like, you know, starstruck and everything, but I wasn't a big Kiss fan. I was at the ELP and stuff like yeah, that, progressive key, rock. Keyboard you know? players never are KISS fans, really. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I, I loved, the, you know, uh, I want to rock and roll all night and all that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I wasn't a diehard KISS fan, you know, into the makeup and all that stuff. Well, you know why you hate the KISS, Kiss uh, because... Uh, uh, they were in E flat, and it really makes it unless you had a <laughs> yeah. piano that you could transpose. Yeah, E flat is not a, fr a keyboard friendly key. Yeah, I didn't even know if they knew how to drop key. Right. <laughs> and, uh, I, the guys in Kiss, I don't know if they dropped key in the, when they recorded. I know Ace did when he went and did his solo stuff. Uh, so I used to, you know, hang out there, and uh, and Ace started dating a friend of mine, and. Uh, and she kept on talking about, you know, us meeting up. You know, she, you got to meet Ace Frehley. And I said, yeah, you know, kind of seen him. I kind of know him. And um, uh, not to go out of a tra tragic end of this, our mutual friend passed away. Right, yeah, I remember yeah. who you're talking about. Yeah, my yeah, friend she's Linda. Hot. Sweet. Mm -hmm. And she was a big celebrity taunt down in New York City. She used to get in all the clubs and everything. You know, she was, she, you know. She was hot. Yeah, it looks like a wow wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, and, and she never got to introduce Ace and I, and uh, it was weird, about a couple of weeks later, I was performing in a club, uh, The Crazy Horse, which was owned by uh, Big Pussy from uh, The Sopranos. Well, there it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, The Sopranos, the TV show. Right. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, it was, um, what's his name? I'm going to have Alzheimer's moments. Oh, that's okay. Um, the guy who played Big Pussy. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just move on yeah, right. <laughs> from that character name. <laughs> Stop saying the name. I yeah. get it. <laughs> just so you know, Gordon, we don't have a delay here. So. But that was a character. So everybody knows that was a character name on yeah, Sopranos. Yeah, it was sure. a character name. The, on awesome. The Sopranos, everybody knows it. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> And I actually met up with Ace at the at the club uh, at at the Crazy Horse, and uh, and I uh, I was performing that night, and uh, I ended up talking to him, and I said, oh, "You know my friend Linda," and he goes, "Oh my God, you're the guy, you're Gordon." Yeah, yeah. So uh, we kind of bonded after that. So that that's how the, that's how we got to be friends was through my friend Linda. Uh, but she passed away. It was and the, yeah. the, the the other end of the story too, and we'll we'll get back to the middle. But unfortunately, <laughs> at the end of that, and what inspired you to write the book Kiss and Tell, I think was um, you actually sort of got suckered into going into business with Ace, even though you just wanted to be friends and not do business. You were handling the business end of uh, of Rock Soldiers. That was the Ace Frehley fan club, mm -hmm. and and just so, so people know from perspective, this was in the Ace's lean years between leaving Kiss and doing his. I'm um, making air quotes that so you can't 
see his solo career mm -hmm. and then getting back in Kiss with the reunion. Um, and then, of course, you know, Ace goes and, and basically says, oh, Gordon's stealing from rock soldiers, blah, blah, no. blah, blah, blah. Great. And uh, and then so you guys weren't friends anymore, obviously, after that. Right. And then not too much longer, the book came out. Yeah. Well, I, I, and the other thing is, I always say this in radio interviews, I, I really despise people that write tell-all books. I really do. I, I, they, they, they do it for a buck, you know, and, and the whole, you know, I, you know, they have nefarious reasons why they write stuff and this and that. And I could see people looking at me the same way. I understand that. You know, people go, oh, you ratted, you did this, you did that. But the reason, and uh, to make more detail of, of uh, what happened was with Rock Soldiers, Ace publicly pointed fingers at me and said I embezzled and stole money. And, and it was oh. completely false. Completely, you know, completely. Right. He was so, uh, you know, uh, this was coming from an alcoholic. Yeah, you know, and you were, his, you were in his bankruptcy hearing as him owing you money. So <laughs> if you stole money from him, how come he was ripping you off as and, a creditor? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was like, it was so, and a lot of fans don't see that. They have that tunnel vision and they go, they just go by what Ace's word is, and, uh, and that was it. And I was like, you know, the scapegoat for Ace's, you know, yeah, bad and, and I'm a big career. Ace, I'm a big Ace Frehley fan. I'm a big mm -hmm. Kiss fan. But I, I read the book, and to me, it doesn't matter who you are as a person, or is he a bad guy, is he a good guy, whatever. I mean, you did your thing, and, uh, um, you know, he did his thing. And it's, it's one of those those situations where I believe everything in your books, the stories, I totally believe it. Um, so it really doesn't matter whether, you know, you were a hanger on or cashing in. The stories are true. Yeah, I, that, that, that's what it is. It, and that I, I didn't write the book to have like a fan like you change your opinion of Ace or anything like that. I just wanted to share the insanity that yeah, I went yeah. through. It, rein it reinforced my opinion, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we went through a lot of crazy yeah. stuff all throughout the years. And, and uh, you know, when, when, our, when, when we had our big falling out, you know, a lot of people back then wanted to hear all these crazy Ace stories. You know, they say, oh, what was it like hanging out with Ace? And, you know, they, they, I've always ran into Kiss fans and things like that because I was running Rock Soldiers. Yeah. And then I was getting a lot of the finger pointing, like you're the guy that wrecked Ace's career, and this and that. And I, and I go, no, yeah. that's that's how I ended up writing this book, you know, to clear my good name, uh, you know, put down all the crazy stories, you know, uh, document everything, and then uh, explain, you know, what happened with the Rock Soldiers incident. Well, um, in between, though, I mean, you tell some great uh, stories, and I tell you, I saw Ace during that period. Um, in 87, it was the first Fraley's Comet tour. He was opening for Cinderella, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, oh and, and he was lucky to get that gig just to set the stage. Cinderella was just starting to break out with their first CD that was big. Uh, Nobody's Fool was out there, whatever. Um, Ace got the supporting bill in that. Thank God he had John Regan and Todd Howarth in the band at the time because uh, they were basically carrying him in Fraley's Comet. Um, but the thing that's just bizarre, and I think that's it. I think the saddest, the story that stands out in my mind from the book the most is, is Ace Frehley in a hotel room in somewhere, ironing his own merchandise, <laughs> trying to make t-shirts to sell at a gig, because people think rock stars are all this big deal and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, how low can you go where you're ironing your own merchandise to sell <laughs> at a gig? It was, it was like a, it was a bar band. It was, it was yeah. up in Boston, I remember. There it was a, a, a club named uh, Nar Narcissus, or... Right. Think, mm -hmm. Yeah. Up in Boston, it was right. near the Rat and all that. And yeah, Ace was in the hotel room, and he put, he's I we 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 sent the kid to, to <laughs> no, get, yeah yeah we sent the kid to get the white t-shirts you know. <laughs> hey kid, it's two hundred dollars. Go get some t-shirts. two hundred dollars. Go and get t-shirts. I said, there's two hundred dollars. That's gone. If I was a kid and you handed two hundred bucks, you're gonna come back with those t-shirts? No, I've been, no. I've been token that up. <laughs> he came back. He came back with the white t-shirts. He came through. I, I didn't meet your co-host. Who's your who's your co-host? Hey, Sue. Oh, my name's Sue. Sue, uh, how you doing, Sue? She's the good. queen of good, 70s good, good. radio worldwide. Ah, uh, uh, cool. He has given me a new nickname. Ah. <laughs> yeah, she's a... Uh, She's sort of, uh, she's, she's, uh, she's every, she's the wind beneath my wings. Oh, mm -hmm. give me a break. <laughs> oh, boy. The, other, the other story that stands out, the Ace story, um, he's in the bar, and, and those of us that know and love Ace, I mean, obviously he wears a lot of makeup. He has some skin problems. Mm -hmm. um, the vow, 
Valium stuck to his face. He had no idea. He's, I'll set, the, set it up for, I don't want to, well, no, you, you tell the story. Yeah, you tell yeah, it better yeah, than I was going to say. It actually, it actually <laughs> happened with Bob McAdams. And, and it was the, it was the uh, his famous DeLorean accident. That was the day right. of the, the mm. famous DeLorean accident. Yeah, the, yeah. Well, uh, Ace Bob, is back and I told you so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Bob, Mc, Bob McAdams was, was best friends with Ace there, before Kiss. They were childhood friends, who was mm-hmm. my co, co-author. And we knew Bob because he used to uh, cut all our hair because he, he was like, he gave the Rod Stewart cut, the really cool, you know, rock rock and roll haircuts. Yeah. So that's how we knew Bob. And Bob was best friends with Ace. And he would travel with Kiss and, you know, do the hair and stuff like that. Well, one, one day... Uh, well, Bob worked up in White Plains, New York, and uh, Ace walked into the uh, into the uh, you know the hair salon that Bob worked in. And, drunk, and yeah. yeah, drunk, and and the owner's going, "Oh, get this guy out of here!" And it's all women in there, you know, getting their hair done, and <laughs> and, and, and and he and he gives Bob a big kiss on the lips, you know, because yeah, he thought that turned women on. Yeah, he, said, yeah, he, it turned he seriously women on. did, and they thought it was like an Italian thing too, you know, because uh, mm. Bob Bob McGowan was half Italian, half Irish. Uh, you know, only know his Irish name, but he was half Italian, and and he's kissing on the lips, hugging, and and. Uh, and he wanted Bob, you know, to get him out, out a half day off his job and go go play, run off and you know get drunk and have fun. And Bob had to make a living, you know. Right. So so the owner of the shop said to Bob, just you know, get him out of here and come back and hey, take a break now, but get him out of here and but come back, you know. So they ended up going to a bar in White Plains, and uh, Ace isn't that. I mean, they're really pounding down the drinks and everything, and Ace is popping Valiums. But he would pop them in his mouth like they were candy, <laughs> and and he would he would right. like you know pop it with his hand like try to do a cool motion pop yeah. it in. Yeah, sure. I just did that with a handful of Percocet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's flip, flipping them into his mouth, but he was missing his mouth, and he was hitting himself on the cheek, and he had so much pancake makeup on it. The volume was sticking on his face. Oh, great. <laughs> and this ain't kiss makeup, kids. This yeah, is like no, L'Oreal. This is like yeah, Maybe. L'Oreal. Yeah. Girl. Maybe it's yeah. Maybelline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Bob's there, and Bob's, you know, watching him, and he's not saying anything. He wants to see when the volume's going to fall off, and say how long it's going to stay on there. Nice. And, and he's at the bar, and he's drinking. And then um, um, Bob pawned him off on to uh, his other friend, I think it was Buddy, uh, uh, this other guy, Buddy. And Bob had to go back to work. I, Ace, I got to go back to work. And he, and that was the day uh, Ace left. And he did, Bob says, I can't believe you know, he knew where to put the key in in the car. That's oh, how God. obliterated yeah, he, he was. Busted that thing up, no and doubt. And he, he, that's when he went the wrong way up the we, Bronx River Park. Where the DeLorean. That was 80, 83, I think, too. We were waiting for him to make his nice. first solo record. That at the time we mm-hmm. thought, gosh, you know, six years for him to make a solo album. Then it took twenty for him to make the last one. But yeah. do you think? I mean, and, and you go into this in your book. Um, you know, he tried to pretend to be sober at the time that Kiss got back together. Mm-hmm. And, I don't, yeah, of course, you're following, you know, Anomaly came out. Do you really, in your heart of hearts, believe that he's sober this time? No. I, no? I hate to, oh. I hate to, I don't want to say negative stuff. I, I have mutual friends. I mean, Bob got, uh, uh, made amends with, with, well, Ace made amends with Bob. Oh, he, that's uh, cool. Just a couple of years ago. But now that, like, Bob's, you're clear of him again because, you know, Ace is like, he just, he's like, uh, he's Train like that wreck. tsunami with the, with the, uh, I, with the uh, and, um, you know, just sucking you in in the water, you know, down the, down the black hole. I mean, yeah, it's, it, I mean, and I bought Anomaly and it's, eh, I mean, Ace was never a great songwriter, but mm-hmm. it's, uh, the thing that's, that's a shame, and I don't know if he's angling for another shot at a reunion or whatever, why he's faking the sobriety, but, um, you know, it's like you gotta. We're, we're root as musicians and music fans. We root for the guy, but it's like, come on, yeah. man. Can yeah. don't, don't don't pretend to be sober and preach if you're still going to be because he's still canceling. Uh, you know, he's he's done his infamous. Well, he'll cancel out on like uh, those rock camps and. Uh, oh and yeah, and I, I, know, I know details on that too. Uh, I just just to let you know, from my experience, back. I mean, it's the same old song with him. And back when I was hanging out with him, he would go on a radio interview as. Well, 
like we were we're talking, and he'd be there, and I'd be in the studio, you know, in studio radio interviews, mm -hmm. and he'd be and he'd be pronouncing his sobriety, going, "I'm, I'm celebrating, I'm celebrating, I'm a year sober," right. and this and that. Oh. And then the moment we walked out of the studio, it was like straight to the bar, and I'm like, "Oh, you gotta be kidding!" Yeah. And I'm I'm not a drinker. I'm not, you know. Right. You think I'd be like the partier right along with him, and you know, going to hell right with him? But but sure. no, I was. I was the guy that he, he knew I was sober all the time. He, he knew he was going to get home. Yeah, that's a great guy to hang around with. You're, yeah. the, designated yeah. You're the designated driver. You're the exactly. ultimate wingman. I was the designated <laughs> babysitter. That's what but, I was. Yeah, but, but it, you're funny. the wingman, but Ace gets the fat chicks if he's <laughs> lucky. <laughs> yeah, I was sober. I got the good looking chicks. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, um,. And here's the thing too with 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 Ace and and one of the things and we're, we're running out of time but we'll just move quickly through it. The thing that the thing that made me the most angry as a fan was him scamming that fan out of the out of the PC. He tried to get a free Mac, a free computer. Yeah, the computer. He had some fan yeah. that just loved him and worshipped him. And again, this is when he was really down on his luck and and he had no money. And he's basically selling his urine and his guitars and his blood for you know for a few bucks to get high off of. Mm -hmm. um, and and some fan wanted to buy him a PC, and he got Carol Kay, his publicist at the time, basically to shake this fan down and get that PC. Yeah. That, didn't the dude even like co-sign on a car for him? Uh, and got yeah. After the fact, yeah, he uh, Cadillac. Yeah, he co-signed on a Cadillac, and wow. then and then he got like his credit got wrecked, you know, ruined because of Ace. And I'm like, nice. how could you do that to a fan? It's like, oh, it's so brutal. And it's of course, we're uh, we're trying to. Ace has got a book coming out, supposedly in April, but knowing Ace, it'll be out in July. Yeah, but I, whenever 2012. He, he, I said which April. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I Simon and Schuster is apparently uh, going to handle the book when it comes out. Yeah, but. Uh, of course, John, his his guy, John Ostrowski, uh, has promised for him to do this show. And if he finds out you've been on, don't tell anybody because <laughs> no, no, he'll never no, do the show. In fact, I'm friends with John Ostrowski. He's well, a don't tell him, guy. Yeah, don't tell him we no, talk to you. No, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Everybody's scared. What is it? Uh, you know, it's funny because the guys that run the KISS conventions, uh -huh. um, there's, you know, some of them are really, really cool. They want me as a guest. you know, right. and, and they say you make a great... I'm not saying I make a great guest when I go there. And I said, Bob McAdams is even a better, you know, the real great guest because he no was doubt. there right from the very beginning, you Tell know, of Kiss. He, he's like, he was the, you know, he, he was there before Bill O'Coin, right. before everybody, you know. He was when the, the birth of Kiss. It was, it was sure. Gene, it was Gene, Paul, Peter, uh, and Ace. And Bob McAdams. He and was Gene, always there. Gene Simmons has pretty much said that he believes your book. I mean, in so in so many words. Mm -hmm. No, he knows it's true. Yeah, sure. and, and he and he and he loves the entertainment factor in the book too. Gosh. But he, he he doesn't go overboard with with his compliments because he's not making a penny no. off it. If right. he was, he'd be more, yeah, you know, yeah. endorsing it even more. But well, yeah. well one more story that I want to get in. Um, Steven Tyler's mother slipped Ace Fraley the tongue when he kissed her. Just go with that. Go, yeah, go, Sue's go loving that. that. Does that make you horny, baby? No. Yeah, Ace, Ace would brag. That, I mean, Steven, Steven Tyler's father was my music teacher in the high school. Uh, uh, wow. Mr. Tyler Rico, yeah. Sure. And, uh, and I actually w played with Joe Perry. Uh, well, then you, learned, he, the, you learned piano from one of the best because he's an awesome piano player. Yeah, Mr. well, Tyler Joe, Rico Joe, Perry, uh, Joe Perry had the Joe Perry project. I was briefly yep. playing with Joe Perry until he pulled out uh, needles in the, in the studio. Yeah, and I, that. And I totally <laughs> abhor that. And I went, yeah. and I was like skeeving out, and I had I, I quit the Joe Perry project. Yeah, I've asked Sue not, I've asked, I've asked Sue not to free bass during the show. Oh, yeah. where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Thanks, yeah, Alan. Ace, Ace would brag that he, you know, he hung out with, with uh, you know, Al Smith and those guys, and the mom, and Steve's mom was there, and she supposedly slipped him the tongue when, when he went to give her a kiss. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, I was like, you gotta be kidding. Look, <laughs> Whose mom does that? Yeah, yeah. well, no, Steve Tyler's mom does that. Dude looks like a lady. Yeah, hey, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know if she was milfish back then. Yeah, did you see, look, dude, I was, uh, oh. I was, I was Googling your name just because I didn't want to butcher the pronunciation. I read your books when they came out. I bought them retail. And thanks, dude, for hooking me up with the autographed copies. Sweet. Ah, uh, you're very welcome. Sweet. I'm more than happy but, to uh, do that. I got them right next to my copy of, uh, a Tommy Lee autographed the dirt for me from Motley Crue. Oh, uh, cool. 
Yeah, yeah he didn't sign it with his hands either, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Man's talented. He's so talented. Smudged. But look, it's a big <laughs> Yeah, but but just keep it at that. So, so, I'm, fri- so I'm friends with Wendy Moore. Oh, and, and so anyway, I googled your name, and mm-hmm. I'm sure you saw the YouTube clip of Leech. That's the name with mm-hmm. your you got a, you got your own kiss doll, which is just awesome. And I just <laughs> laugh at that stuff. It's like, come on. Talk about an ad hominem attack. You don't like the message, so you attack the messenger. I yeah. mean, so I, we laugh at that. We read the comments, mm-hmm. and Sue was a little bit sketchy. Yeah, she saw that. She's like, are you sure you want to have this guy on? I'm like, look, <laughs> I love Gordon. You know, he's going to be on the show. But but Wendy Moore, we're friends, and she was, you know, we, we you and I talked about this on Facebook, that is when you were at fault or wrong in the book, you owned it and said, look, I got drunk that night. I did this. I did that. Whatever. You totally owned it. Right. Makes mm-hmm. it totally believable. Mm-hmm. But all through her books and stories, I had never slept with a rock star yeah, before. I, yeah, I had I, never done heroin or cocaine before. <laughs> I had never, uh, you know. I never smelled marijuana I never before. pulled a tug on Jeff Beck before, <laughs> you know. I mean, come on. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a roller coaster with, yeah. with her book. I mean, I read a book. I thought, I thought it was interesting. It was good. You know, and it um, was. But I, I feel, you know, she, she got dragged. She got dragged down into the void no <laughs> doubt. Drug with Ace and got caught up with the drugs. Which, now, people that don't know, I, th- I think you actually own or are part owner of Pitbull Publishing, which did the first book. Yeah, I, 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 I bought into the company after the after their they they're out. They got like eight titles out, sure. ten titles or something like that. And then when I made when when I, the money I made with the Kiss and Tell book. I had the opportunity to buy into the into the publishing company. And it's a small company. Well, in fact, when Kiss and Tell came out, I was offered deals with Judith Regan. I don't know right. if you know Judith. Oh Regan yes, I do. From yes. and she was at you the time doing deals with Howard Stern and all these people. Mm-hmm. So I had a, I had a um, an agent, and then that, that's who was dealing with Judith Regan. And the book deal was horrible. I mean, sure. it, it was. I mean, I I went into numbers in the in the Kiss and Tell More book. And I and I I said to Bob, we're not going to make any money on this thing. So I went with that sm- the small publishing company. They did really good by me. You know, they were on the up and up. They, there was no, you know, usually you get screwed with. Right. You know, I actually had a, had deal. I mean, I had I had about five offers from all the huge companies, but they were all bad offers. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was going through an agent. I wasn't even, and right. it was my first book, and I'm not a known sure. eh? You know what? They're not going to give you the world. No, they're going to bend From you. an unknown, you know, sure. you can't foresee how big the book was going to be, but Kiss and Tell took off, uh, you know, and, and I mean, it's written 12, 13 years ago, and it still has life. I love know? the new edition, too, with the new pictures. Yeah, the new edition is great. Yeah. It's, 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 the new edition is the way I wanted that book around. Originally, and, and we good. got a chance. I mean, it has this life that we were able to do it the way we really wanted to do it. Well, cool. Tell the kids how to get it because we got to we got to get ready to roll out to our next uh, set of music and then uh, get cool. some bills paid. Um, they're not easy. Amazon.com. Uh, you know, all the bookstores online have it. Um, I'm trying to think. Barnes and Noble. Uh, all the bookstores carry it. If it's not on the shelf, you know, you could just go right. Right up to the the geek behind the desk and go. I want you to tell by Gordon Gabbard and Bob McAdams, and they'll go. Yes, yeah, we'll be we'll be there in two three days. And, message. And got, do yeah. me a favor. Message Bob McAdams and tell him I'm going to send him another friend request because he totally like didn't accept my last one. You're kidding. I figured he thinks I'm a stalker <laughs> or something. No, I do. We need to I hook up. I would have. If I would have known, I would have three-wayed you right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> look, Sue's already got us into a three-way earlier with, with Davy Jones' wife, so Davey it's Jones's all good. Wife, we're trying to get her. Well, kids, this is Gordon Gebert. He's the author of Kiss and Tell, Kiss and Tell More, and the awesome, we didn't even get into it, we ran out of time, Rock and Roll War Stories. And I got all- two new titles coming out. I'll oh, yeah. Out really quick, and it has to do with that guy that did the, uh, the video. It's called Kiss Stalker Unmasked. Sweet. It's going to be a great book. And I have uh, on the a wing angel of, book. Yeah, angel on a wing and a prayer. Because you yeah. did keyboards for Angel. Yeah, I replaced Greg Jafria, and I was playing with Angel for a while. And Angel was a uh, Bill Alcoin uh, discovery too, or were they on Casablanca? Yeah, they were on, on the same label as Kiss. Sweet, yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thanks, Gordon, man. Thanks, you, Al. you keep New York rocking for us. We love you, man. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, thanks, right, thanks I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, have a good one. Take care, guys. Peace. Bye. That was Gordon Gebert, and we're going to get right back into the music. Do you like that?